everybody, I, um, I'm coming on a little bit earlier. Um, Lord has been speaking some amazing things. And I just want to give him all the glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father God, for who you are. That you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. And Father God, I will praise you till the day that you take my last breath. Father God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for breathing life into my lungs, Father God. I thank you for allowing us to still connect even though we can't see one another. So Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for Calvary, Father God. I thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ to die for me, Father God. I thank you for the blood shed, Father God. I thank you for finding me before I found you, Father. Father, I ask that you would continue to use me, continue to guide me, continue to watch me, Father God. Continue to watch us, Father God. Continue to use us, Father God, to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, Father God. Father, I ask that you would pour a blessing upon this nation, Father God. That you would heal your land, Father God. Father God, I pray that this nation becomes a land for you again, Father God. That we will make you great again, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that we are still allowed to praise your name from the rooftop. That they cannot take that away from us, Father God. That maybe they can take our socialism right now, but they cannot take our praise to you, Father God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. I thank you for being the King of Kings. And I thank you for being a Lord worth worshiping, Father. Father, I thank you, Jesus. Father, whoever is on this line, I just ask that you would bless them use them guide them teach them show them father god in every way shape and form lord jesus i thank you father god i ask that you would continue to use us continue to guide us father god father i pray for all the churches and the leaders i pray for the leader of this country father god give them the wisdom give the leaders the wisdom on how to handle this in the best way father god let us seek your face day and night until we hear our prayers answered father god that if we have to do praying all night or do a vigil, Father God, whatever we have to do in the midst of our own homes, let us do it, Father God. Let us seek you in ways that we've never seeked you before, Father God. Let us get on, on our faces night and day, Father God. Father, allow your will to be done in all of our lives. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we all say, Amen. I was supposed to get on at 9 o'clock, and the Lord has just rocked me. Since this morning, about 8 o'clock, it's just been the Lord speaking a whole bunch of things and speaking into my life. And He was asking me questions on where exactly I am. And so I'm going to ask you some of those same questions. Where exactly are you at? So... As we begin this um, devotional, and I pray that you guys don't wait just till 9 o'clock. I pray that the minute you open your eyes, that you start to praise God. Because He's a God worth of our praise. He's a God worth of our worship. He is a mighty, mighty, mighty God. And He does deserve our praise and worship. Um, as I as I. As I woke up, as I opened up my eyes, the Lord started to speak to me in, in, um, in questions. Where is my faith? Where is my belief? Um, am, I, am I fearful? And so all these questions started to run through my mind. And I answered them in the best of my ability of what I believe. Um, but then I believe that the Lord wanted to just show me in word, in scripture, how important it is to stay in his word, especially in troubling times, especially in times like these where um, I think we all get a little rocked a little bit. I think we all get a little uh, fearful, even the people who say they're not fearful. Um, I believe fear starts to creep in. I don't care how Christian you are. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. 
there is this sense of maybe even in the back of your mind that maybe you can lie us, you can lie me, but you cannot lie God. And so even for me, I had to ask myself, do I have a sense of fear? And the answer to that being honestly, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with all of you, the answer is yes, there is a bit of fear. I'm a father. I'm a, I'm a husband to, to my wife. And so I want to be um, a protector as well. And so there is a bit of fear in God forbid in case of something does happen. Where are my kids going to end up? How are we going to end up? Are we going to be okay? And the Lord just started to speak into my life. And I thank God for that. I thank God for him. I thank God for just still willing to show up and show off no matter what we go through. If we seek his face, he's willing to speak loud and clear. But I think, are, are, we, are we going to listen? Are we going to... Are we going to accept his word as the final word or are we still searching? So I, I ask all of you that same question. Are you still searching? Even though that the word is clear and the word of God is clear, are you still searching? Are you still trying to find a word that will please your flesh? Because we always say this as Christian believers. We always say that the word of God is key. The word of God is final. And we will we'll say that. But my question to you guys today is, are you practicing that? Is that what you truly believe? Or is it just a nice word to say to someone else? Sometimes it is easier to uh, help someone else than it is for you to help your own self. So today, I want to go deep. Today, I would like us to speak straight to God. Today, I would like us to talk about how do we really feel um, when it comes to fear? How, how do we get over this hump of fear if we do have it? So, let's begin. Let, let, um, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with just worshiping. So, I don't know where you guys are at. Put on some music. Let us worship the God that we believe in. Let us worship the God that we say we believe in. Let us worship Him because He is deserving of our worship. Sometimes we forget we could sing the songs that talk about let us worship uh, Him through the tough times. My soul is well. But then when things start to truly happen to us, we get fearful. And then we stop the praise. The music slows down. But today, Father God, we are on a mountain, Father. Because we are believing in you and you alone, Father God. Give us the spirit uh, of belief, the spirit of faith, Father God. The spirit of a sound mind. The spirit of your love. And put us, let, allow the Holy Spirit to remind us who our God is today because we do not belong in that spirit of fear. We do not belong to fear, but we belong to you, Jesus, and we dwell in your house in Jesus' precious, mighty name. We thank you, Father God. 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 We thank you because you have never left us. Yes, Jesus. Your promises still stand that you are faithful even when we are not. That you are here for us even when we are not there for you, Father God. Father God, that you have never left us. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Yes, your faithfulness. Your promise still stands, Father God. We are believing in you, Father God. We know that you have the ability to turn this country around. You have the ability to snap your fingers, Father. And that all this disease goes away in one strike. We don't need a cure. You are the cure, Father God. We don't need the, the doctors, to the scientists to figure out a cure. For you are our cure, Father God. You will heal your land. And we are believing 
believing in you, Father God. We are believing in you, Father God. And Father, forgive us. Forgive us if we've turned away. Forgive us if we um, believed in, in men before believing in you. Father, we know that you have the capability to do all things. So I ask you, Father God, I ask you to take your hand and, and wipe away this disease. Take your hand and cure the people who are sick. In Jesus' name, Father, we're believing in you. And we know that your word still stands true. We know that you are the, the way maker, that you are the healer, that you are the provider. We don't need to concern ourselves anymore of how are we going to make it through this because we are believing in you, that you are a great, great father, that that's who you are in Jesus' name. These are not just songs. These are not just worship songs. These are songs that were supposed to be meant to, to come into our souls, to come into our lives, to hear the word and then truly believe the word, not just hear the word and then think of something else. So like I said in the beginning, as, as I woke up and God was just speaking all these things to me. He showed me some things in scripture. And the first thing being, if you guys want to turn your Bibles, if you want to get in your Bibles, and let's go to Ephesians 2, 8. It's so important about faith. He spoke the word faith in me. Have faith in me. Have faith in me. And this was the thing that he kept on telling me all morning. Have faith in me. Have faith in me. So glory goes to God. I'm telling you the same thing. Have faith in him. Have faith in him. Have faith in him. Ephesians 2.8. If my computer will just start working. Here we go. Let's get into the word. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. We are saved. The first thing that God has spoken to me, that it was the reason why I'm even saved is because it's through the faith that I have for him. It is through the grace that he has for us. We are saved uh, by grace through faith, through faith. Well, how can we believe in Jesus Christ to get us to the next world, not this world, to the next world, but yet we don't believe that he can get us through this epidemic? Come on, people. Come on. I know that, man, I, I wish I was on the podium right now. I wish I was in front of you guys. Man, come on. Come on, church. Why? I see churchgoers. I see people who are Christians for a long time who are fearful right now. And I'm telling you right now, break that spirit of fear in your house. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your spouse. Enough of this. This fearful, everything I, I hear about, everything I'm seeing is fear, 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 fear. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. So what is it? That's an enemy. That is a spirit of the enemy. Because we have faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. We have the ability through faith, through faith to be saved by grace. And that's the grace of Jesus Christ. Come on, people. Come on, congregation. Let's get back to reality. Let's get back to the God we serve. These are not just songs to me. These are not just songs to you. These are things that we truly believe. When we listen to these songs, we know that there's a Jesus Christ who loves us. John 3, 16, what is it? It, he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son for who? For us, the world. We are the world. He gave it to us. He gave his son for us. So let's come back to reality. Let's come back to the God we serve. Let's believe in the God we serve again. It, we are saved. We are saved through our faith in believing in Jesus Christ and the work that was done on the cross. That's the first thing he wanted me to know today. The first thing that, that was on my mind. The first thing that, that, that he told me. Glory goes to God, Robin. Faith as a mustard seed can move the mulberry plant and throw it, cast it to the sea. And thank you. That, that's so true. And we're losing faith because why? Faith is getting creeped in 
by fear. We're losing, we're seeping our faith and fear is coming in. And that's why today it was like God just hit me with a ton of bricks and saying, what are you doing? What's going on? You can have faith in me to believe that I'm going to get you from this world to the next world? This world to the next world, but you don't have enough faith that I won't take care of your children, that I won't take care of your wife? Come on, people. I'm speaking to myself at this point. I I know that that's what the Lord has spoken to me. The Lord is is was stern with me today. He was stern with me. Enough of this. Enough. The second thing he showed me was this. If we go to uh, Hebrews 11, 6. What is pleasing to God? What is pleasing to God? The second thing he, he told me was this. What is pleasing to me? So in Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 6, this is what it says. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible. You want to please God? You want to be a good Christian believer? You want to come back to reality? Then start pleasing Him by believing in Him. Start pleasing in Him with having the faith that's worthy of His praise. We can't believe in Him this much. We have to believe in Him with what? A full heart. A full heart. A full belief in Him. Not, oh, I'm going to believe in Him, but I'm also going to be uh, scared of this coronavirus. Or I'm going to be scared of any virus. Or I'm going to be scared of what the government's going to do. Or I'm going to be scared of what, what anything is going to happen. No, I needed, I, me, Paul, I needed to come back to that. I needed to come back to this verse. I want to be pleasing to God. Whoever really knows me in congregation, I know you know me. You know my heart. You've seen my tears. I want to be pleasing to God. I want to, I want to live a godly life. I'm trying my hardest to do so in both spectrums of that. I want to be pleasing to God. And by being pleasing to God... So, so th this is what the full thing says. <clears throat> and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone, uh, anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. I believe in Jesus Christ. And I know most of you do. And, I, and a lot of you do. Probably all of you do. So let's come back to it. Let's have a word for God. Let's seek Him in the ways He deserves to be seeked. Let's believe in Him again. Again, let that fear that, that creeped into our souls, even if it was only that much, it was that much too much. So let's come back to Him. Let's come back and believe in the Jesus who came and lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and then rose again. Come on, people. Let's see what else we got. This is the, the, the third thing God, God spoke to me. We don't know exactly what to do, right? So we don't have the wisdom to know what to do. But glory goes to God. We have a God who knows everything. Amen? If we have a God who knows everything then let's believe in the words he says. This is what it says for, for you guys who don't know what to do. And, and this, everything I spoke to you guys today, if I convict you guys, I convict myself. Th this is what it says in James uh, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. If anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But... But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by, by the wind. That person should not ex uh, expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Father God, I don't want to be unstable. Father God, I don't want to be tossed like the like the waves from, from here to there. Father God, I want to be grounded. I want to be anchored in you. So Father God, my prayer today is that anything that was living in me of fear, Father God, that is cast away. 
I don't want the mulberry tree to be cast. I want the fear that was living inside my heart, that was living inside my mind. I want it gone, Father God. And I'm believing in you, Lord Jesus, and you alone, that you're able to do so. So I, I pray to, to, to you, Lord, that each and every person that's on this line right now who's dealing with something, Father, I ask that, uh, that you would take it away. If they're dealing with fear, that you would take it away, Lord Jesus. That you didn't give us a spirit of fear. That we don't have to wonder if we're going to be okay. We know that we're going to be okay. We know it because you are our great, great father. And just like I preached, my last, one of my last preachings um, for the church was about Shadrach, Meshach, and Amendigo. And even if you don't save us from this coronavirus... We will never bow down to fear again. We will never bow down to fear. So guys, I'm telling you today, God gave me a spirit today of a sound mind. One of his love and his power that he truly has. Because I am believing in him. We cannot say that we believe in him sometimes or when everything is going right. We are being tested. We are being tested. I'm telling you, this is a test and it brings forth perseverance character. What is your character looking like? How is your perseverance working? What are you doing? Are you, are you hiding? Are you going underground and hiding? Or are you shining your light? I never thought in a million years, whoever knows me knows I'm not a big Facebook guy. I don't get on live. I, I barely uh, put anything of my personal life up there. But God spoke to me and said, go ahead and do this devotional. Show the people. Tell my people about me. And still be the light. That's what I created you, Paul, for. To be the light, that, to shine bright. And so this is what I'm doing here. And I'm going to do it every morning until God tells me to stop. Until God tells me enough. So I'm going to continue to be the light of the world on here. And I pray in Jesus' name, congregation, that you continue to do the same thing. And I will end this thing the same way I started, in prayer. And I ask that you do the same thing, that you shine your light brighter than ever. Because there's enough fear in this world. There's enough people who are scared. There are enough people who are terrified. And we bring the good news. But are you bringing the good news? Are you bringing the good news? Or are you adding to their fear? Are you adding to their fear? Or are you bringing the gospel to them? We always talk about the Bible as the good news. Then why are we not sharing the good news with others? If we have something that they don't have, then what are we doing, congregation? What are we doing, people? I pray in God's name that you get ready. Lady, I, lady <laughs> Rose, I pray you get ready. If you're ready for work, I pray that you bring the message of God with you. I pray that you bring the good news to where you're going. And that goes for every single one of us. Get ready to sp spread the good news. If you have to go out for groceries, rem remember to spread the good news while you're there. If these are the last times, which I'll be honest with you, I don't think they are. I think they're birth pains for us. I don't think that, that we're in the end of days. Well, l let me rephrase that. We've been in the end of days since Jesus ascended, right? Amen. <laughs> We've been talking about the end of the world since then, okay? But here's what I'll tell you. I don't think that, that this is what the Bible says in Revelations or Thessalonians or Daniel. Yet, yet, I say yet. What what may bring, I don't know, because only God knows the time and the hour. We know the season, but maybe we are in the season, and I do believe we probably are, but I don't believe that, that, that we're quite there yet. There's some things that still have to happen, but here's what I'll tell you. Until that moment comes, be the best Christian that you can possibly be. Shine the light of Jesus Christ wherever you're at.
and continue to love God. Continue to worship. Maybe this is the time that we needed because we were so busy with our lives. We were so busy uh, working on other things that we constantly had to been out of the house, that we constantly had to be uh, used somewhere or something or someplace. I've heard a lot of people in the ministry I have that said, oh, I would love to, to spend time with God, but I constantly work. I'm constantly working. Well, now this gives you the chance that you're not constantly working. But I'm asking you today, Christian, are you on your knees? Are you on your face speaking to God now? Or is this just giving you enough time to play games and watch, the, watch TV or be on Facebook? Are you still seeking God's face in all this time that we have? Are you in your Bible? Take the knowledge that's in the Bible so when you get a chance around someone who's a non-believer that you can be the light of the world. How can you preach the good news if you don't know the good news? How can you be the light of the world if you don't know what the light is? How can you be the salt of the earth to preserve the word to preserve what Jesus Christ has given us if you don't know it, if you don't know the Word of God, how can you preserve it? So again, I ask you this, Christian. Where are you at with God? Where are you at with God? Are you spreading fear? Or are you spreading light? Are you spreading love? The love that He has for us. Do you have faith? I know that's what I was asked today by the Lord. That's what made me uh, see this, seek the scriptures. And this is what he showed me. So I pray in God's name, if this done anything for you, um, if, if this goes out towards you, if you can feel a little bit of this, and maybe you are feeling a little scared or a little concerned or a little worried, that I pray in God's name that God has done something for you today, that he removed that spirit of fear. So I'm, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get off, guys. And also, God bless your day. Um, so, Father God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for all that you are, all that you are, Jesus, because you are King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, I ask that you would continue to guide us, watch us, protect us, keep us safe from harm. Father, I ask that you continue to give us our daily bread and our daily bread being your word, Father God. I pray that people seek your face. I pray that people get used by you, Father God. I pray that people seek your guidance and your wisdom because you are faithful and you give it for those who ask and ask earnestly. I pray that anything that's in our hearts, that's uh, even if it's dust of fear, Father God, I don't want the dust of fear on me. I don't want that dust of spirit on me one bit, Father God. I ask that you remove it from all of us in Jesus' precious mighty name. That you would give us the spirit of love and a sound mind, Father God. And the power that only you can give, Lord Jesus. I thank you for today. I thank you for who you are and all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. I will see you tomorrow at nine o'clock uh, again, and we're going to do this again, and we're going to see what God has in store for us. Because I'm, like I said before, I'm going to continue to do this at nine o'clock until until God tells me to stop. Uh, and I'm going to continue to share. And I pray that you guys continue on. Put on your worship music. Pr bring joy in your house. There's been enough fear from the news. There's been enough fear from people. So I pray that, that you guys spend time with God, continue to spend time with God, and God bless each and every one of you. Later, guys. Bye-bye.